great. So ladies and gentlemen, an insurance company, how does an insurance company make money? How does an insurance company make money? How does an insurance company make money? Great. So to make money, ladies and gentlemen, an insurance company, this is what an insurance company does. This is what an insurance company does. Receives premiums, I love that. Receives a premiums, receives premiums. Through commission seeded, I love that. I can see Irene, I don't know what Irene has done here. Remove pin, yes. Yes, great. So ladies and gentlemen, you guys are right and you are very bright. What you've done is to tell me exactly what an insurance company does to get income, to get income, to get its cash flows. An insurance company gets its cash flows, ladies and gentlemen, number one, through the premiums, the premiums that you give them, the premiums that you give them, the premiums that you give them. So if, for example, you go and get a policy from Jubilee Insurance, for example, it's a, a children education policy. What will happen is that uh, depending on the amount insured, they may tell you, for example, to be paying them 5,000 every month for a number of years. And then once, for example, you reach the 10th year, you start getting those bonuses back. So the first cash flow item, you guys are bright. You've told me that uh, the very first way of uh, this insurance company getting its cash flow, the biggest actually, it is through what year? These, these premiums, the premiums. Thank you so much. And then the other thing that you guys have been able to remember very fast is the fact that uh, what I was trying to explain, if we have got say three insurance companies here, yourself in this case here, your insurance company is this one. Each insurance company, ladies and gentlemen, each insurance company of course must be having uh, 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 people, investors whose risk it's covering. So it has got uh, their customers there. It has got their customers there. All right. So one of the fine days when you are at B, you will get a very huge customer. For example, East African Breweries Limited coming and telling you, hey, please insure all our property, plant and equipment worth, for example, 100 billion. Worth 100 billion. So you will evaluate in this case here the kind of exposure that your insurance will have. I mean, should anything happen, for example, should they encounter fire, fire with guts, basically like their entire warehouses, ETC, will your insurance company really be uh, uh, able to pay the damages? Of course, in most cases, it will be no. So then what you need to do is to scout around, both locally and internationally, right? Look at, for example, if it's international uh, insurance companies, do we have uh, an insurance company that is uh, as big uh, to the extent that you can easily underwrite this loss, this risk? Right. So then what you do is basically to transfer what you this client to see. You transfer the client to see. So you transfer the client to see what will happen. Of course, C is not that C is blind. C knows that to get customers is a very hard thing. Right. So in this case here, you have seeded some business to them. You seeded some business to them because of that uh, concept of you seeding some business to them. Then there will be some commission in this case here seeded commission for business seeded commission for the referral like that. So you'll be getting, once this guy pays his premium, perhaps 10% will be coming to you. As for me, commission seeded. So that becomes what you're somebody, that becomes an income. It's a cash inflow to you. At the same time, ladies and gentlemen, there will be smaller farms like Farm A. Farm A, in this case, will be getting, it's smaller than you. It will be getting, in this case, here some business. And then, of course, they would want to transfer some risk to you. So they see you as a bigger brother. When they see you as a bigger brother, they transfer some clients to you, then automatically you shall accept. You shall be accepting uh, those policies. You shall be accepting those referrals. So when you accept, ladies and gentlemen, then you will be paying what year? Some commission for the business you accepted. So commission accepted will be an expense to you. Commission accepted is an expense to you Commission seeded is an income, is an income to a business, is an income to a business, is an income to an insurance company. I would want to pause a little bit for 30 seconds and ask whether we are together up to there. 
Are we together? First of all, as we go into this business, we should always appreciate that commission seeded. Commission seeded, ladies and gentlemen, is what is an, an income. Commission accepted. Somebody may easily confuse. Somebody in this case here, commission accepted is what here is an expense because it's an expense that you're going to be paying. You're going to be paying for business that you accepted from smaller, smaller insurance companies. So basically, you become a reinsurer. You're becoming a reinsurer. You're becoming a reinsurer. Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me. If you look at, for example, the income statement, income statement of most of these insurance companies in Kenya, most of these insurance companies in Kenya, including the very biggest, when you look at their income statement, you'll be able to see here, we have the income statement of an insurance company, and I'll be able to show you this in practice. For example, we have the famous AAR. I'm a member of AAR, and I'm so proud of them. These are great guys, especially whenever it comes to medical issues. Great insurance company. But if you look at its income statement, you will see in this case here, they give you what we call underwritten profit. Profit out of what here? Underwriting. So underwritten profit, of course, underwritten profit, they'll come and look at their various segments. Various segments, various segments. So for example, they could be talking of motor vehicle insurance segment. We have medical insurance segment, ETC, ETC. So they'll be able to give you this. And then of course, immediately down there, before you close there, we shall be talking of what your other incomes. I would want you to see this, other incomes. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a serious insurance company should be having a huge investment income. Should be having a huge investment income. They should be having rentals. These guys here should invest in shares. They should invest in bonds of blue chip companies. Why? Because you and I appreciate the fact that eh, underwriting business, the business of underwriting risk is a loss making one. It's very rare. I would want even to challenge you. Look at, for example, the income statements of all insurance companies in Kenya to believe insurance, Britain insurance. And tell me whether there is even a single one that made an underwriting profit last year, that made an underwriting profit last year. What these insurance companies here will be boasting about, they'll tell you that we are profitable. It's simply because of what are the investment income, because they are so big in terms of investing. They are so big in terms of investing. So what uh, these insurance companies here will do when they receive these premiums, they will, of course, in this case, here tend to do what here to go and invest wisely, invest wisely outside there. But underwriting, Underwriting is quite a funny business because Africans have never appreciated insurance business. I mean, if you walk in these towns, streets of Nairobi, you'll be surprised in these, some of these hotels. There are people who sit in these hotels every day planning on how they're going to steal money from an insurance company every day, planning on how their vehicles in this case here will be, in this case here, kind of a, a carjack happening. And the vehicle in this case is driven straight away to places that they can never be retrieved. And then they go and make a report to the insurance company that, hey, you know what? This car was stolen, right? And the moment you make that kind of a, a claim that this car was stolen, the very first thing the insurance company will do, even if they do their own investigations, even if they do their own investigations, the very first thing they will do is to see a loss, is to see a loss. So they shall start, start talking of what your claim intimate, intimate, intimated, a claim intimated from the word intimacy. You know, this person is coming in a very sorry state. I, I'm, I'm sick. I'm, I'm, I'm this and this. So in this case here, at the end of the day, once they make such claims, even if you are going, ladies and gentlemen, here to do a lengthy, of course, uh, research to see whether these guys are cheating or not, at the end of the day, you must account for that loss. There is that provision you must make. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, making a profit in an in insurance industry, it's very hard. I know like for AAR, for AAR, ladies and gentlemen, here last week, was their last, uh, I think, last date for the old year, right? So they get anybody, including my madam, telling me, you know what, now we need to go for any kind of checkups. Why? Because we'd want to deplete our account. And it's not that she's dishonest. That is what happens outside here. For any flimsy excuse, if, for example, in this case here, your daughter was to cough a little bit 
and you have a very good AAR insurance, for example, cover going up to 20 million, you rush them to Nairobi Hospital, ETC, ETC. Why? Because you're seeing this as a freebie. So underwriting profits in this case have become quite hard to be realized. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen, if you're given this kind of a question now, if you're given this kind of a question now, this kind of a question, I hope you are able to see it. It's question number five here. It used to be in CPA section three in the new syllabus. This has been taken to the advanced level, advanced financial reporting. Last time, they gave us a question on banks. They gave us a question on banks. And so many students in this case here got it wrong. I don't know why, right? So this time around, not last year, last semester, this time around, students are telling me, well, you know what? This is very likely. This insurance concept is very likely this time around. And I put a big tick. Very, very, it's highly probable. And you know, students are very bright. Students will come and tell you, ladies and gentlemen, they'll come and tell you that you know that this subject is called advanced, advanced financial reporting and who? And analysis. And, and, and then they'll tell you, you know what? Because of this analysis aspect, EPS, EPS in most cases will keep on reappearing because EPS happens to be a very good metric for measuring success of an entity, success of an entity. So as we try to project, ladies and gentlemen, as much as we know that group will be there, don't forget insurance. Don't forget again reading uh, this EPS several, even if it came last semester, because EPS forms the bulk of this. You know, it's called AFRA, -F AFRA like that. So they want me to share my screen. They want me to share my screen. So sharing this screen, there I am. Are you able to see the screen now? Are you able to see the screen now? Are they able to see the screen now? Are they able to see the screen now? Great. So what do they want me to do? What do they want me to do here? Ladies and gentlemen, what they want me to do is to give them a revenue account for both marine insurance and the fire insurance for the year ended 31st March 2017. And then number two, they want me to give them a statement of comprehensive income for the year ended 31st March 2017 for three marks, three marks. And then they want me to give them a statement of financial position as at 31st March 2017. I'm sorry, I've, I've not been reading uh, the charts. I can see there are so many here. I, I'd already sent this to the group. I'd already sent this to the group. Can somebody help me uh, resend again? Can somebody in this case help me resend this paper to the group? Yes, thank you, Mayom. I can see you know this. <laughs> I like what uh, Stephen is telling me. Should we have, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, insurance company then uh, being accounted for under the non-profit uh, making organizations like NGOs? No. That is why now we have IFRS 17 coming. That's why we have now IFRS 17 coming. IFRS 17, ladies and gentlemen, is having a lot of uh, revolutions in the industry. One of the revolutions that we are expecting in the industry is where now insurance companies will be required to bring in the members they insure as investors, right? To encourage, in this case here, yeah, these members who are being insured to act responsibly, right? Right, so they're going to have various products, ladies and gentlemen, which, for example, we call uh, uh, policies that are participatory in nature, where this person who has been insured, and this can easily come under emerging issues, emerging issues. This can come under emerging issues. This can come under emerging issues. So that uh, if, for example, you have this person who is uh, insured, like myself, the whole year, for example, have not become sick, or when I became sick, for example, I chose to go to a different was told to, 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 to work it out myself out so that uh, by the end of the year, for sure, I've not used anything from my medical cover allowance. I've used nothing. So IFRS 17 tells you that this person should participate in that saving. Already they have started with motor vehicles, that motor vehicles in this case, if you're not involved in accidents, what happens next year is that your premium reduces a little bit. But IFRS 17, as I've told you, is revolutionary. It's coming into effect from 1st of January, 2023, next year, revolutionary. It is by doing that, that now we expect, ladies and gentlemen, to have situations where if you are a responsible 
person who has been insured by a good organization and you are helping them make savings, they are going to be giving you some kind of water dividends. What do you think, hey, you, my good students? Can that help? Can that help in this case here to change the status of uh, insurance companies at least in terms of underwriting profits? Can that help in this case in changing uh, uh, whatever losses they're making to and writing losses to and writing profits? Yes, that is great. Yes, yes, yes. Now here we are. So when you get this and gentlemen, somebody giving you this kind of a question really, where should you start from? Listen and listen and listen to me very well. Never ever should you start with revenue account. People don't start from revenue account. What you do, even if it's group consolidation, even if it's whichever topic, whenever you are given an opportunity to come up with an income statement or a statement of financial position, first of all, disregard number one, do number two and number three. There are very many marks which are for free there. So let's start with number two, statement of comprehensive income. So what I'll do is to pick the name of the company. The name of the company is a good name. It's Malipo Insurance. These are those insurances that could be paying claims. So you call it Malipo, Malipo Limited. Malipo Limited. So we have here Malipo Limited. Malipo Limited. So we have here Malipo. So we have here Malipo Limited. So we have Malipo Limited. Malipo, Malipo, Malipo. Nope, Malipo. Malipo Limited, yes, yeah. Malipo Limited, Malipo Limited, uh, statement of comprehensive incomes, statement, statement of comprehensive, comprehensive, comprehensive incomes, comprehensive incomes for the period ending, for the period, for the period, for the period ending, for the period ending, uh, have they given us a date? Of course, yes. They must have given us a date. Of course, yes, they must have given us a date. So the date given with an gentleman here, the date given with an gentleman here is 31st March 2017. It's 31st March 2017. So we have the 31st March 2017 like that. And then we underline like that. We underline. And then of course you start with the first item here is the underwritten straight out even without reading anything, is the underwritten profit. So the underwritten profit you must, according to IFRS 4, I'm being told that the board is not clear. The board is not clear. Is that the case? Are you guys able to see my board? Are you guys able to see my board? Or it's very blurry. They're saying they're able to see it. They're saying they're able to see it. Yes, they're able to see it somehow, it, but not clear. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for purpose of also taking a good video, let me act responsibly there, right? How about now? How about now? Is it a bit better? Is it a bit better? It can't be 100%. It can't be 100%. Yes, it's okay now. Thank you so much. It's clear, Hapo. It's clear. Thank you so much because you're helping us also to create good videos. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see here that we have, a, we have a two business lines. You can see we've got two business lines. We have what they're calling marine, and then we have fire. Marine and the fire, marine and the fire. We are always told by IFRS 4 to do what, ladies and gentlemen, to write or rather to declare these profits here for each business line. So we have here underwritten profit, we have here marine, and then we have fire, fire. Of course, the two, I will leave them blank. Why? Because these two will be gotten by us going through the process given in part A, which is ascertainment of the revenue account, ascertainment of the insurance revenues. So for now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just leave it like this. And at times I may not even get these figures. At times I can even decide in this case here to laugh with my examiner, just put it here because it's blank, 
draw for him out here a smiling emoji. A smiling emoji because at times, you know, exam, especially AFR, is not how good you are in terms of numbers, right? It's about the skill of finishing all the questions. And in this case, you're trying to maximize, trying to maximize the number of marks by doing things which are what here, which are obvious, which are obvious. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from there, what do we have? Of course, I'll come and now pick now. You know, this is profit from the insurance business lines. Then I've got in this case here, investment income. Investment income. Like now, this is a free mark that uh, this examiner will always give you investment income. I'm not smiling genuinely investment income, I'll be able to pick the investment income. I'll be able to pick the investment income. Is there somebody who can see investment? Yes, it's here. Investment income, who is able to see a figure? There's somebody, you guys are young enough. You guys are young enough. Is there anybody who is able to see that investment? How much are we talking about there? Somebody talk to me. 336, 336, 336. And then from there, as a gentleman, remember what you do now is to come here and they give us expenses. So you come here and the less general, we call them general, general expenses. Those expenses that are not attributed to any, the expenses that are not attributed to any of these insurance, any of these insurance business lines, the general. In other words, we call them overheads. We call them overheads, overheads, overheads. Those expenses which are in the card to benefit both, like rent, like salaries, but unless they are attributable, the ones which are not specific. Here we are looking at the general. Is there anybody who is able to see the general? And then the other thing that I forgot to tell you, I don't know whether there is anybody who has got uh, this paper at home, somebody who has already printed a physical paper. Is there somebody who has printed a physical paper? Anybody who has uh, printed this physical paper, they have a physical paper, physical question paper. Anybody who has this at home, do you have printers? Yes. So Ankara, then please do me a favor and add them. Do me a favor and add them. Why I normally start with this is because whatever items that I'm able to pull from my TB2, the final accounts, I need to tick them. Because for the statement to balance, I must be able to adjust for all those things. Eh? So whenever we pick up something, like now we have picked the investment income, please tick, 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 tick by the side there. Because we would want to slot. Remember, final accounts about slotting things from the TB. You slot them, you slot them like that, put them here. So now we are looking for these general expenses. So general expenses already I know. The general expenses already I know. The general expenses, I can even see them here. So like now this, actually, if I'm the one doing this exam, I'll even open the two statements together. I'll, I'll also open, in this case, your statement called what your statement of financial position in a different page. And I start posting. I normally like posting everything simultaneously. Like I know that this freeholder property, this will go to the balance sheet, the statement of financial position, motor vehicle balance sheet, free marks, machinery balance sheet, furniture balance sheet, audit fees. What do you think of these audit fees? What do you think of audit fees? What do you fees? You can see they haven't specified any insurance business. Like they haven't told us that this audit fees, ladies and gentlemen, is for marine or is for fire. It's a general expenditure. The only thing that I need to do is to look down here and see whether there is any place they're telling us that there was any audit fees that was accrued. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you know that audit fees should never be accrued. Eh? Audit fees is like that. Just pick it. And the auditors are quite greedy individuals. They're always like looking at their flight, which is okay, which is business. So come here and pick audit fees as the first, as the first general expenditure. So we have here audit fees. How much? Is there somebody who is able to see the audit fees? How much are we talking about? Somebody, somebody, audit fees, how much? Audit fees, how much? Is there somebody who is able to see the audit fees? 288, right? So we are being told that it is 288. It's 288. So apart from auditing fees, do we have any other thing? Oh, yes, there are so many which are general. There are so many which are general. These are free marks I'm getting. You can see like now director's fees. Yeah, this general. So mention their director's fees, ladies and gentlemen, 500 watt here, director's fees, 500 watt here, 94. So director's fees. So we have here director's fees, director's fees. How much? Somebody remind us again. Director's fees, how much? Director's fees, how much? Director's fees, how much? 580, 
594, thank you so much. 594, thank you so much. Look at what is happening. This is a bright student. Do you know what most students did last semester when they were given a question on banks? Most of them in this case here did not write anything. They forgot that we have got uh, quite very many things which are very general and similar to these other companies. How I wish they went straight away to the statement of financial position of the banks, the income statement of the bank. They would have picked several marks. If some of them are here repeating with us, yeah, they wouldn't be here today, right? Please don't go to an exam and then you see that this question here is an insurance question and not do anything. No, they're free marks. So long as you number your questions very well, like now this is Roman two of this question, you number very well, you go back to Roman one later. It's allowed, it's allowed. Don't in this case here, go and uh, do make stations in questions that you're not very sure. Go to things that you are sure about. And really that is the technique of the exam. So apart from director's fees, is there any other thing we are able to see Apart from director's fees, is there any other thing we are able to see which is common? Which is common? Do we have any other stuff we are able to see? Oh, yes. I can see depreciation of uh, non-current assets. Yes. So I can see depreciation. I can see depreciation. So I can see depreciation. Depreciation of how much? Depreciation of how much? Somebody is able to see this depreciation. Depreciation of how much? Depreciation of how much? Depreciation of how much? Depreciation over how much? This is a general expenditure. 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 Okay. They are telling me it is 1086, isn't it? They are telling me it is 1086. It is 1086. It is 1086. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please move ahead and look for any other general expenses that we have here. When you look at uh, these management expenses, are they general? From your understanding of what I'm trying to explain, are they really general? Are they general? These management expenses, are they general? I can see they have specified management expenditure for marine, management expenditure for fire. That cannot come to this statement. This will go to the uh, revenue accounts. Revenue accounts for the various business lines. This cannot come there. This cannot come there. So if I'm the one doing this and I have my physical paper, I'll simply mark that uh, this uh, management expenses, ladies and gentlemen, those management expenses will go to R. I'll simply write there, R, R for revenue account. Why are we taking them to R, revenue account? We are taking them to revenue account because uh, insurance is all about what here? Yeah, segmental reporting, various segments. If you have got segments, various segments should be taken and accounted for under what we call revenue accounts. But if you've got a general, if you've got a general expenses, all of them which are not specifically marked for any segment, they come here. Great, so that one we have marked it for R. I'll take that to the R. Great, now as a gentleman from there, I can see accounts receivable and the payable. Of course, these are statement of financial position items. I write their S for statement of financial position. Investment income, I've already ticked that one. Ordinary share capital, I know that ordinary share capital will go to the statement of financial position. The same case with share premium, the same case with this retained profit will come down there much later. Premiums outstanding, outstanding will be the statement of financial position. And of course, what year? Uh, uh, of course, what year somebody? Because of this marine fire, they have to go to where? They have to go to the revenue accounts, right? And earn the premiums, I can see they cannot really come here. So th th that is it. If you look at the legal cost, they have also been defined for each product. So they will go to the revenue account. You can even see these expenses relating to claims. They're telling us for marine. So they can't come to our income statement. Income statement expenses, we only take the general, what we used to call in management accounting, overheads, overheads. When they mention expenses relating to claims marine, the automatic that cannot come to my income statement. Bad debts, again, for marine fire cannot come there. We have investment in shares. This is a statement of financial position. We have direct revenue, uh, premium received. I can see marine fire. Again, that can't come here. I can see marine fire. I can see marine fire. I can see bank balance and cash uh, at hand. Of course, that will go to the statement of finance. So the only thing that I need to do is to read this particular additional information to see whether there is any expense that I have here, whether there is any general expense, whether there is any general expense, whether there is any general expense among us this, which 
wasn't paid perhaps by the end of the month, end of the year, I mean, which I need to accrue, which I need to accrue. So I'll come very fast, ladies and gentlemen, here and go through the notes. Go through the notes here and earn the premium that will not affect me. Commission on both insurance seed and reinsurance, of course, these are revenue items. Directors have proposed a dividend of 5%. This will come much later. Tax will come much later in my income statement. Premiums outstanding, that will not affect me. Claims intimated. Claims intimated. This will uh, go to another account. Remember what I'm doing is a, a statement of what year, comprehensive what year, a statement of comprehensive income. A statement of comprehensive what year, a statement of comprehensive income. So I think that is it, ladies and gentlemen. So what I need to do is basically to come here and mention that uh, once I get this, I add this, I subtract these three, then I should be able to arrive at what we call profit before tax, which I'll leave in this case here like that, right? Then from there, I know there is tax as aspect. I know tax is 30%, 30% of this smiling face. I'll be getting it later, right? Once I get this uh, tax, I'll be able to, once I subtract the tax, I'll be able to get profit after tax, which is the same as what, yeah, somebody, profit for the year, profit, for the year, profit for the year, profit for the year. Once I get profit for the year, what do I do? The next thing now will be for me to start making appropriations. I start paying dividends. I start paying dividends. So in this case here, do we have any dividends, uh, ladies and gentlemen? In this case, question here, do we have any dividends? Do we have any dividends? Do we have any dividends in this question? Do we have any dividends? I'm trying to show you how you can fetch really free marks, free marks three marks. So dividends, you can see there is a, a dividend tech clause. There is a dividend clause, which is not number three. The directors have proposed a dividend of 5% on the outstanding share capital. So 5%. Is there somebody who is able to see the outstanding share capital? Yes. Ordinary share capital, I can see it here, it is 3,600. So the only thing that I need to do is to take 5% of 3,600. This is a free mark. I'm telling you I'm passing. I'm passing. So remember that is dividend proposed. This is dividend proposed. It will be very important for me to have it as proposed. It's not paid. Why do we write it as proposed in the income statement? It's because now this will go to, so that we don't forget, actually even mark this. This will go to the statement of what year financial position. This will go to the financial statement of financial position as a liability because it's proposed. So it is 5%, it's 5% of 3,600. 5% of 3,600, 5% of 3,600. Who, who can give me this figure? Somebody here for dividend that has been proposed. So somebody is giving me a figure of what year 180, a figure of 180. I can see my own giving me a figure. My own, remember there is something which is missing up here. That's why I'm putting this ahead here to make also the examiner smile. Right? I don't want to evaluate this. I'm simply trying to get what we call low hanging fruits. Low hanging fruits. So, like now, this is quite an easy one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once I pay the dividends, then I'll be able to get the retained profit for the year. So, mention there retained profit for the year. Retained profit for the year. For now, I will leave it blank. Retained profit for the year. For now, I will leave it blank because I don't have really, I don't have really, I don't have really, I don't have really. This one, it is supposed to be negative because uh, even though, okay, we'll be able to take care of that later. So retained profit for the year. I'll be getting a figure here. I can just put the excess there for purpose of you following, right? But again, I can see another free mark, another free mark. I'll come and talk about what you add. Retained earnings brought forward. Add retained earnings brought forward. Is there anybody who is able to see retained earnings uh, brought forward, ladies and gentlemen, in this question? Is there anybody who is able to see the retained earnings that were brought forward in this question, really? Is there somebody who can see the retained earnings that were brought forward? Let's work together. Let's work together. Let's work together. Is there anybody who is able to see retained earnings that were brought forward anywhere? Retained earnings brought forward. Retained earnings brought forward. Somebody who has got better eyes. Yes, you can see retained profit at the beginning of the year, 2016. Retained the profit at the end of the, at, at the beginning of the year was how much here somebody, somebody who has got good eyes, the students who have already printed these. Retained the profits at the beginning of the year in Kuanga P. 
retain the profit. 540, right? It required 540. Thank you very much. 540, 540. And then, of course, once I add this, I'll be able to get the retained earnings current forward now. I'll be able to get retained earnings, retained earnings, retained earnings, retained earnings, current forward. And then I can even come and put stars there for my examiner. I can even put stars there for my examiner. Do you know what, ladies and gentlemen, will happen to a student who does this thing like this? Do you know what will happen to this student? Can you guess? Do you know what will happen to this student? Out of the three marks, how many marks do you think this student will get? Out of the three marks, how many marks do you think you'll get? It's because, it's because you guys maybe have never gotten an opportunity We've never got an opportunity to see the marking scheme. Normally, what they will do, they will come and in this case here say, tap, tap in the marking scheme, marking scheme. And then they'll come and say, any three, three marks. Or any six, three marks. Trust you, me, this student, because of confidence in Roman two, Roman two of this question, the student will get full marks. And then the student next year will be walking majestically in the roads of Nairobi, streets of Nairobi, saying that I'm a CPA Kenya simply because they knew the trick. They knew the trick. They knew the trick. The problem is most students don't get to this level. Even in consolidation, most students keep on doing a lot of workings there and those workings are never marked. They are never marked. They are never marked. I'll be able to share with you some of uh, these things you get to see. You get to see how, actually I think I've, I've, I've done that in the past only that most of you aren't keen. So I'll be able to do again. Ikuna siku niluwapatia marking scheme ya CASME. Bambi yao ni kitu wanafanya N6, N3, 3 marks. Ambi yao ni kitu kweli. Ambi yao yona kweli yo kitu. Ambi yao yona yo kitu kweli. My home is really complaining. No, my home, my home I, I would want uh, in this case here to be very honest. My own, this year you'll pass. This year you seem to be knowing so much. You can't compare my own of this semester and my own of last. I'm not trying to say that you are badly off, but this semester, my own, you are okay. You are more composed. Last semester, I used to tell you, my own focus, focus. You'll see this time around, and you'll come to tell me. This time around, you'll pass. No, no, no you, you know, you have to be truthful. This time around, my own, my own will pass all the papers. <laughs> He's more composed. He's more composed. Last semester, he alukona was was in English, and I think maybe had begun his new job. Uko. So, alukona can make moves. Same as we make moves. And alukona, where did you get that a half? <laughs> this time round, you will pass. Trust you me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, can I go to the next? Can I go now to the next? Can I go to the next statement? And I hope you, are, you, you guys are appreciating why we are leaving this blank. Eh? Most of the things are blank here because we shall be filling them later. So we have Okewa. Okewa is raising up his hand. So is it possible, Okewa, you type your question or would you want me to unmute you, Okewa? Okewa, let me unmute him. Let me unmute him. Ask to, ask to unmute. Yes. Sorry, sir. It was a mistake. Sorry. Oh, by mistake. Uh, no problem. We've also gotten a chance of hearing. Sautiako, which is very good, very good. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, then lower your hand, now you need to lower your hand, great. Now, please allow me to go to the balance sheet now. Allow me to go to the balance sheet. Allow me to go to the balance sheet. Great, remember the second part here? In the second part here, what do they want me to do? Sorry. In the second part, what they want me to do, ladies and gentlemen, the second part is quite an interesting thing. What they want to do in this, what they want us to do in the second part, they want us to give them statement of financial position as at 31st March 2017. How many marks are they giving us here? Six marks. I'll get all those six marks without knowing what I'm even doing. What I need here is basically courage. Courage. All right. So mention there the name of the company. I know that one we are so good. There's nobody who misses the, the, the title. 
all students normally get the title right. So please mention there Malipo Insurance Company Limited. You're writing the title everybody normally gets the title nicely. Malipo Insurance Company Limited. Statement of financial position as the earth. Statement of financial position. Statement of financial position. Statement of financial position as at when? 31st March 2017. Have we done that? Have we written 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 that? Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we are quite confident ourselves. So we know for sure what we are supposed to do is to come right away here, is to come right away here for my case. I would want to reposition my camera in a nice way so that I don't, in this case here, rub. Great. So here we are. Great, great, great. So we have here our statement of financial position. So we start with what here? The assets. And assets always we begin with non-current assets. Non-current assets. Are you able to see those non-current assets very fast? In this question, are you able to see the non-current assets very fast? I'm able to pick those marks, many of them, many of them, without knowing what I'm doing. When I come here, for example, I can see free property, freehold what here, somebody, I can see freehold property. Are you able to see the freehold property, ladies and gentlemen? Are you able to see the freehold property? Yes. So we have freehold property. We have freehold property. Yes. Of how much? Of 50, 40, 50, 40. Thank you so much. That's a, an uncurrent asset, right? I can see motor vehicle, motor vehicle, motor vehicle. Of course, down there in the notes, there is nothing touching on these things. Motor vehicle, I can see 4,200. Motor vehicle, I can see 4,200. And then we have your machinery, and they have given us really the netbook values adjusted for depreciation and whatever. So we have a machinery and equipment, machinery and equipment, machinery and equipment, machinery and equipment of 1800, machinery and equipment of 1800. From there we have furniture. So we have furniture, furniture of how much? Furniture of how much? Furniture of how much? Furniture of how much? 1560 or something, 1560? 1560. Furniture of 1560. Furniture of 15 what year? Uh, 60. Is there any other thing when you go down there, we can see audit fees, director's fees, depreciation. The next thing that I'm able to see, ladies and gentlemen, there very first, there is something that I saw there in shares. There is some investment in shares somewhere. There is some investment in shares somewhere. Is there somebody who is able to see that investment? Yes, investment in shares. Of how much somebody we are keen here investment. This is a this is an uncurrent asset. So investment in shares of how much? 1680. 1680. Investment in shares of 1680. Investment in shares. So could you kindly guys do me a favor? Especially the guys who have got uh, this paper in uh, this paper, which is a uh, physical. Please tick whatever we pick. Tick so that later on we shall be able to assess our trial balance. We'll be able to assess our trial balance and see what are we really not factored in? What are we not captured? What are we not captured? Great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll not get the total because later on I may be forced to bring in something given what I'll find in my, given what I'll find in my additional notes. So for now, I'll just leave it like that. Great. 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 Great, so from there we go to the current assets. Current assets, really, they are quite easy. So we go to the current assets. So current assets, what do we have? Please move very fast and again, leave some space. Remember, these papers belong to CASNEP. Of course, you have paid for them, but they are for CASNEP. Always ensure if it's an income statement, it's on its page. A statement of financial position on its page with very good spacing so that in case something crops up later, we should be able to add whatever comes up later there. You know, I normally get students really squeezing their work so much. The extent I wonder, are they also practicing accountancy with this exam booklet? 
accounts. You know, at times accountants are very mean. Don't be mean with everything, no. There are things you're not supposed to be very mean with. Ladies and gentlemen, current assets, what do we have there? 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 Current assets, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this very well, we're looking at things like receivables. You're looking at the things like, uh, let's try to get them. Let's try to get them. Let's try to get them. I'm so sure there are very many. I'm so sure there are very many. I'm so sure there are very many. Right. Right. Yeah, you can see here accounts receivable. Are you able to see accounts receivable? Accounts receivable over how much? Somebody if you're following. Accounts receivable over how much if you're following? Don't bring payable here. So accounts receivable. Accounts receivable over how much? Accounts receivable over how much? Account receivable of how much? 876, put it there. And then when I look at uh, down, 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 I can see bank balance. Bank balance, in this case, I'm able to pick it very first. This is a current asset. So I have here a cash at bank. How much are you able to see there? Again, nobody should ever cheat you that in cash name that you have to write this in liquidity, whatever. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. Is there any other current asset that you guys uh, think of which you shall be able to have for an insurance company? Any, any? Let me see here. Let me see here. There is a question being asked there. Can you tick on the exam paper? Nowadays, they have brought a very bad rule, very bad rule, but you can never write on the exam paper. But I think that is quite a, a bad Especially for FR, it's quite a bad, bad, bad thing. Because even myself, if you tell me that I can't put any mark on a paper, like now when I'm looking at my trial balance, I would want to put some lines, the ruler, for me not to miss figures. I don't know why they came up with that, but we shall be able to continue talking with them, tell them that it's their duty to ensure that nobody walks with more Kenya to an exam room. But if a student would want to make a few notes on that question paper, really, those students should not be punished. Global, even ACCA, all over. People write some things on what, even these key points, they put them on the question paper and then they transfer them to a booklet. But for now, what I'll advise if you do that, Kasneb will get hold of you and they'll, be, they'll suspend you from never doing the exams for four years. So for now, every working, all your working should be well within your booklet, at the back of your booklet. At the back of your booklet, do your workings there. Do your workings there. Like last year, they suspended some lady, imagine, just for writing. And that lady came crying to me. And I could not really assist now. I could not assist at all because of that new rule, that new rule, that new rule. So ladies and gentlemen, look at, uh, look at uh, your question very well. Do we have any other really, any other really, any other really current asset? If, for example, you have some customers who haven't paid you, if you have uh, some customers who haven't cleared paying you premium for the year, then we have to accrue them. So in this case here, we have uh, premium uh, accrued, premiums outstanding, premiums outstanding, premiums outstanding. So this one I'll simply write there and put a star there. Premiums outstanding. And then there is another income that I told you that comes out of reinsurance. You've seeded business to a reinsurer, right? So this guy will be giving you some money and possibly he may not have a cleared paying you everything by the end of the year, right? So in this case here, we have commission seeded, outstanding, outstanding commission. In this case here, done what year? Seeded, outstanding. So in this case here, we have commission seeded, commission seeded at the end of the year, outstanding, out there, out there. So it's an income that you're supposed to be getting, but you haven't got, so it's your asset. The money will be flowing to your company. So you leave this very fast. Now we are through with our assets. Now we need to go to the last section. The last section is the equity and liabilities. Equity and liabilities, of which you normally start with equity. So come and mention here equity. Equity, of course, you begin with what here somebody, you begin with, ladies and gentlemen, the share capital. This is normally a free mark, share capital. So are you able to see the share capital? Is there somebody who is able to see the share capital here? Share capital here. In this question, what do we have as the share capital? 3,600, right? 
After all, we had already seen the statistics. And please remember to be generous because later on we'll be able to get a few things to slot in. So share capital is 3,600. Do we have anything to do with that? Do we have anything to do with share premium in the question? That is an equity component. Do we have any share premium? Do we have any share premium in the question? Do we have any? Yes, they're saying yes. Share premium in the question, ladies and gentlemen, share premium in the question. Where you guys were able to see share capital, we have share premium. We have share premium. Share premium over how much? Share premium over how much? Share premium over how much? 1,200, right? Share premium of 1,200. Share premium of 1,200. So we have share premium of 1,200. The other thing that I know, ladies and gentlemen, that will always feature here is retained earnings. Retained earnings carried forward. Retained earnings is part of uh, the owner's funds. So retained earnings is part of the owner's funds. The retained earnings here carried forward. This has to be taken there. What I'll always do myself is to come and put stars there. Perhaps I may not even get time to fill those things. I just want to show the examiner that I know the general that I'm ready to become an accountant out there. Only that I may have forgotten a few things, but I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay than somebody in this case here who is leaving the entire booklet blank. The only thing they write there is God bless the work of my hands. Which work have you done there that you want God to bless? Which work? Which work? Which work? Which work? Right? 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 <laughs> Great. God bless us all. <laughs> Great. Now leave some space there again, leave some space there again. Now go straight away to the non-current, go straight away to the non-current what year? Liabilities. Do we have any non-current liability like bank loan? I never got to see any here. I don't think there is any. I don't think there is any. I don't think there is any. I don't think there is any, any non-current asset, non-current liability, I mean. So then straight away, we should be able to attack the current liabilities. Now we should be able to attack the current liabilities. So mention their current liabilities, current liabilities, current liabilities, current liabilities. Of course, later on, we shall be bringing things like uh, the reserve. Eh? Remember, remember, remember our reserves. Our reserves will be coming later on. Our reserves will be coming later on. We'll be coming later on here. Reserves for any unexpired claim. That will come later. But now we want to attack now the current liabilities. So current liabilities, yes, I can see they're naming them there. They're naming them there. Ladies and gentlemen, my space is not enough really. Let me try to see whether I'll be able to uh, fix something. I can come here. I can come here. So we have current, current liabilities. So what current liabilities are you guys able to see? I can see already these students are labeling them they are telling me, Mualimu, that there is a payables. There is a payables. There is a payables. There is a payables. Payables figure. Are you able to see the payables figure? Are you able to see the account payables figure? Is there somebody who is able to see the account payables figure? First of all, give me the figure. Give me the figure. First of all, give me the figure. The payables, 396. Correct. And then somebody has known, ladies and gentlemen, that come by the end of the year, we shall be having some claims which are outstanding. So we have claims, in this case here, outstanding. Claims, outstanding. Claims outstanding at the end of the year. At the end of the year, of course I can pick it right now. Claims outstanding at the end of the year. And then, yes, so I can just leave this, although this I can pick it, but just leave it like that. And then I can see some student telling me that there is commission accepted. Commission accepted, but outstanding. 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 Remember the concept of reinsurance. The concept of reinsurance, you accepted someone's job, right? So you must be paying this guy what year? Some commissions for having accepted, right? Right? So by the end of the year, if you haven't paid some commission to this gentleman, to this lady, then you have to accrue it like that. You must accrue it like that. Ladies and gentlemen, there is also something that students here tend to forget always. We have the tax. Remember the tax? The tax. Tax. Normally, the tax in the income statement, you'll realize that taxation has only been paid by the end of the year, 31st December. 
The same case in this case here with dividends proposed. Dividends proposed. The same case with dividends proposed. Like dividends proposed already, we have a figure. Dividend proposed, you already have a figure. Dividend proposed, you already have a figure. Do you remember that figure? Do you remember that figure? Do you remember that figure of dividend proposed? No, they are not talking to me. They are not talking to me. Dividend proposed, that figure is 100 what year? 80. So the only thing that we need to add later on is uh, really the reserve for any and and uh, risk. The, the reserve that you normally put for any unearned premiums or risk, which is unexpired, unexpired, later on we shall be able to do that. Now, as a gentleman, if you allow me, I'll now be able to go to the last thing. So don't forget to number your questions very well, like that. This number three, statement of financial position. Now we are going to the very best called what here, somebody revenue accounts. Question number one, revenue accounts. Question number one. For revenue accounts, now we are going to the revenue account for both marine insurance and fire insurance for the year ended 31st March 2017. For the year ended 31st March 2017. 2017. Thank you so much. Now we shall start right away. We shall start right away. So for my case, I'm so lucky because I have my students in this case here will be able to fill up these things later. And then we see so I can wrap this comfortably. I can wrap this comfortably. I can wrap this comfortably. The most important thing is that I'll be looking for these two figures. We get everything, get everything down. So because of space, I will come and wrap this comfortably to create space for the revenue accounts, what we call the segment reports. Segment reports for insurance. For insurance, we have to prepare those segment reports in an, a special account called revenue account, which will seize from next semester, next semester, not next semester, next year, we're going to be having IFRS 17 in place. So mention there revenue account. So revenue account. So revenue account. So this revenue account, ladies and gentlemen, we normally look at uh, four things. Four things, key things that you are told by IFRS 4 to account for. Is there somebody who is able to remember those four key things? The four key things that you're supposed to, in this case, ladies and gentlemen, to always work with. The four key titles, the four key titles, who remembers them? Who remembers them? Who remembers them? Yeah, we have the first one, premium. Thank you so much, premium, yes. Claims are very important. Commissions are very important. Commissions are very important. Any other thing? Specific expenses. We call them specific expenses. Revenue accounts, you need four key things. Number one is a premium. You guys are uh, very bright and you have been able to take that. Number two, after you account for premium, you have received premium. What is your major business to pay out the claims? Next thing will be the claims. Right, and then we come and account for this smaller revenue called what you call me commission, of which there are two types. As Aaron is trying to tell us there, and then lastly we have what we call specific expenses. So let's begin with the, uh, the, the the premiums. Let's begin with the premiums. Let's begin with the premiums. Premiums. So we begin with the premiums. So remember, for premiums, we have to do this in the form of segments. Our segments, if you remember, we've got two segments. We have the famous marine. And yeah, it's marine versus what yeah? Fire. Marine versus fire. Marine versus fire. Oh, the way we have said them, they must be that order. No, 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 no. But just for now, given that you have got a, a one week here, you can cram that order. You can cram that order. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please talk to me in terms of uh, these premiums. What are we supposed to remember very first? What are we supposed to remember very fast in terms of these premiums? 
in terms of these premiums, what are we supposed to remember? Very first, very first, we have got two types of premiums. We have the premiums that we get directly from our customers. Premiums that we get directly from our customers. Thank you so much. So we have in this case what we call the direct premiums. Direct premiums. Direct premiums. So are you able to see the direct premium, Yamarine? The one we get directly from our consumers, from our customers directly. So direct premiums, are you able to get direct premium, Yamarine? Direct premium, Yamarine. Are you able to get the direct premium? Direct, ah, you can see here. Direct premiums received. 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 Let me write this very well. Direct premiums received. Let me write this very well. So direct premiums received. Thank you so much, you guys are so nice, you know. So we have here direct premiums received. So direct premiums received. So for Marine, what are they giving me for Marine direct premium received? Is there anybody who is able to see 5,400? Is it 5,400? Did, did I interchange them? Did I interchange them? For Marine, for Marine, did I interchange them? Please don't interchange, don't interchange. You're supposed to interchange them. Let's check how they are, although you should be able to pick them really in whichever way. So we have here, we have a direct Marine, direct premiums received Marine. Marine is 5,400, fire is 4,200. So Marine is 5,400, 5,400, and then fire is 4,200. Now, apart from these premiums that I received, from ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, yeah, from who, from who, from uh, from directly my people, there are other premiums that I will receive. Is there somebody who is able to see this other premium? They are normally given there directly. Yours is to pick. These are very easy area. Yours is to pick. You can see here, the insurance premiums received. The insurance premiums received. So we have here reinsurance premiums received. Reinsurance. Premiums received, received, received. Marine, is there somebody who is able to give me the insurance premiums for Marine that were received? Marine, what are you able to see for Marine? For Marine, very easy. Reinsurance premiums received here for Marine. People are not talking to me now. People are tired now. People are tired now. So for Marine, what do we have here? Somebody 1440, yeah? Thank you so much. How about reinsurance re premium received? Uh, uh, from the fire sector, from the fire sector, from the fire sector, I'm being told 980. Now, please, you just follow this concept of initial or rather of premiums, premiums throughout, premiums throughout. So now we are through with reinsurance uh, premiums received. Then we have got this reinsurance premiums paid, reinsurance premiums paid. We also paid to our insurers. So these ones we shall write them, but deduct, deduct. So we have reinsurance premiums paid. So we have reinsurance premiums paid, reinsurance premium, but paid this time round. Are you able to pick the figures from here very first? Marine, I can see 960 versus what here? 600. 960 versus 600. 960 versus 600. So we have here 960 versus 600. Am I correct? Am I correct with these two? 960, 600, yes. 960, 600, yes. So straight, ladies and gentlemen, once in this case you have been able to, you've been able to, you've been able to pick those three items. Now you think about the outstanding. You're supposed to less, thank you very much. You're supposed to less, yes. Because it's a cash outflow. It's a cash outflow. Now from there you come and think about, you bring, please don't forget this. You bring the outstanding premium at the beginning of the year and outstanding premiums at the end of the year. You must bring those. These are supposed to be five in total. Five in total. So are you able to see the outstanding premiums at the beginning of the year? Outstanding premiums at the beginning of the year. You can see here, we have, we have outstanding premiums. If you are able to see them, could you kindly give us these figures? Could you kindly give us these figures? Premiums outstanding. Premiums outstanding. Premiums outstanding. Premiums outstanding at 1st of April 2016. Are you able to see, not the unearned ones, not the unearned ones, 
premiums outstanding. Premiums outstanding as at first. I'm able to see 1080 and what here somebody? 840. Okay, I, I think there is a problem there. I'm being told that uh, there is a figure. Please, if, if, let, let, let's ensure that you get these figures correct. Thanks, Irene, for raising your hand. So this one, is it correct or wrong? This one here first. Is it 960? So uh, these figures, are they correct? It is 960, correct. And this one here, 600. 960 and 600. Yes, thank you so much. 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 Back to this. Let's correct this. I'm told that this one, the insurance premium received is supposed to be 960. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's supposed to be 960. It's supposed to be 960. 960. So at this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, already I've picked this 960, eh? Already I've picked this 960. Premiums. So come and give us the outstanding premium. So you've got two types of outstanding premiums. You will have outstanding premium at the beginning, outstanding premium at the beginning, or in this case here, brought forward, brought forward. Are you able to see the outstanding premium brought forward at the beginning of the year? These ones will normally be put in the TB, in the TB, in the trial balance, in the TB, in the trial balance. Are you able to see, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, the outstanding premiums here, Marine 1080, 840, 1080, 840, 1080, 840, 1080, 840. What do you know about these outstanding premiums? You can do that a bit later. Come and give us the outstanding premium, outstanding premium at the end of the year, which is the outstanding premium, which was carried forward. Carried forward. Outstanding premium carried forward. Normally, this will be given in the notes. In the notes. Is there anybody who is able to see the outstanding premiums, really? Anybody who is able to see premiums outstanding? Note number five. Premiums outstanding as of 31st March amounted to 1800 and 840. 1800 and 840. 1800 and 840. So we have here 1800 and 840. Now listen and listen to me very well. These outstanding premiums at the beginning. These were the premiums in this case, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, we expected quite soon, immediately when the financial year began, right? So it means that uh, these outstanding premiums, ladies and gentlemen, of course, must be part of where? They must be part of these premiums that were received in the year. So this 1080 is supposed to be done what yet to be done? Is supposed to be deducted. The outstanding premiums at the beginning of the year, subtract them, subtract them. The outstanding premiums at the beginning of the year, if I were you, I would have crammed this, that outstanding premiums at the beginning of the year, always subtract them. And then the outstanding premiums at the end of the year, you accrue them, you add them to the rest. So then if that is the case, could you kindly come and add here and give me what we call the net premium. Give me what we call the net premiums. Give me the net premiums. The net premiums. So you are taking here 5,400 plus this, minus this two, plus this, plus this. What figures do we have? Somebody talk to me. We need to finish this now. We need to finish this now. We need to finish this now. So Gordon tells me it is 6,600. Gordon tells me it is 6,600. How about for fire? Fire, by force by fire, by force by fire. What do we have here? Somebody 45, 60. Thank you so much. 45, 60. Now, good students of mine, once you get premiums, what do you do? Now you do the underwriting, isn't it? You do the underwriting, you do the underwriting, you check for risks and you cover them. You check for risks and then you cover them, right? So you create your reserves. The first reserve, of course, will be the one that was brought forward from last year. So we have here reserve, reserve for an expired risk, 
for an expired risk, an expired risk brought forward, brought forward, brought forward. So basically the unearned premiums at the beginning, unearned, unearned, call them unearned premiums at the beginning. Are you able to see these uh, unearned premium gentlemen at the beginning? Is there somebody who is able to see them? They are not talking to me. 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 Are you able to see these unearned premiums? Nowadays we call them reserves for an expired risk. For an expired risk, reserves for an expired risk. What um, figures are you able to see there? What figures are you able to see at the beginning of the year? Is there somebody who is able to see some figures there? Is there somebody who is able to see some figures? They're not talking to me. So 5760, 300, 5760, 5760, and 3000, like that. 5760 and 3000, like that. And then, of course, now we have uh, the reserves for the year. We have in this case here the reserves, the reserves carried forward. The reserves carried forward. So give us here the reserve, the reserve, the reserve for an expired risk, for an expired risk, for an expired risk, which we need to provide for in this year, which we need to provide for in this year. Here we need a policy. Have they given us the policy for creating this reserve for this year? Let's see. Have they given us a policy for creating this reserve for this year? Have they given us a policy for creating reserve for this year? They have told us somewhere here, ladies and gentlemen, that an unearned premiums reserve for an expired risk is to be maintained at 100%. Is to be maintained at 100%. This must be a very risky business. Very risky business. Very risky business. Is to be maintained at 100% and 50% for marine and fire. So marine is a very risky business. So marine, they are telling you, you know what? Come and take whatever you had earned here, whatever the claim to earn up here, provide for the entire amount as risk. Provide for, for the entire amount as what here risk. So the reserve for an expired risk, for an expired risk card forward, for marine, it will be 100%, 100% 100 of 6,600 which gives me 6,600. I'm supposed to deduct this. It's a provision. It's a provision. And then for fire, for fire, it's 15% of the premium that we earned. The premium that we had created up there. 50% in this case, should be deducted from this and taken to a different reserve, right? So 50% of 4560. 50% 50 of 4560, ladies and gentlemen, is there somebody who can give me this figure? 2280. 2280, so please come and deduct, give me something there. So please remember that uh, these unexpired reserves for the year, we created them, the percentage given there shall always be subjected to what? The net premiums that you have here. You provide, let me read this again. 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 This is so important to us. This is so important to us. What have they told us, ladies and gentlemen, here? What they've told us here is that an earned premiums reserve for an expired risk, risk that we are thinking, ladies and gentlemen, that will come to swallow us, is to be maintained at 100% for marine business and 50% for what year? For fire. They are not telling you 50%. Look at this. It's 100% and 50% of the premiums. So the premium, ladies and gentlemen, even if they don't tell you, when they give you those percentages, these percentages must always be applied to what? Must always be applied to the premiums here, these ones here. So could you kindly give me this figure? Is there, who can, uh, is there someone who can kindly give me this figure? So they're telling me it's 56, 5760, 5760. Is that true, 5760? 5760? 5760, 5760 versus what here, somebody 5280 versus 5280, like that. Please double underline this and tell me what name do we give to these figures? What name do we give to these figures? What name? 5760 and 3000, these were for last year. For last year. For last year, we are bringing forward. We are bringing forward for last year. Right, yes. 
at the beginning is for last year. So what name do we give to this? And I tell the profit, you are still far away. You're not there yet there. It's gross premium. It's gross premium. Thank you very much. It's gross. Somebody must be very tired here. Somebody must be very tired here. Somebody must be very tired here. So this is what we call the gross, the gross premium. Yes, the gross premium, the gross premium. Gross premium, you must give it, if you look at the accounts prepared by insurance companies, they normally call this one A. This is the first item here, A. Gross premium is the first item. Very good scholar. Stika Nasema, it can't be uh, underwritten profit. Aro Janipa claims where Nike. Let's first of all pay the claims. So part A of the account is over. And because I don't have enough space, those gentlemen will allow me to delete this, to rub this, so that I can create space for claims. I'm so sure it's a little bit hard, but are we together really up to now? Is there somebody who is really trying to work it out to ensure that we should be able to sail together? Are we together up to now? Great, great, thank you very much. So let's go ahead and pay the claims now. So pay the claims, let's pay the claims, let's pay the claims. So part B, the second section, let's pay the claims. So claims, again, I'll do, in this case here, claims. So the claims, the same, same, still under this, this is still under revenue account. So the claims, I have claims for marine, I have claims for fire. Claims for marine, and then I have claims for fire. Claims for marine, and the claims for fire. Claims for marine and the claims for fire. Great. Now, as and gentlemen, we have here claims that were done what here, somebody. Look at this. This is a straightforward thing. Really, I'll get all the marks without knowing what I'm doing. Just go to the section talking about claims. Go to the section talking about claims. Go to the section talking about uh, claims. So you can see claims. You can see claims here. We have claims outstanding. But first of all, I'll begin with the claims paid. They are specific. I have claims which were paid for the marine. So claims paid. So I'll talk of claims paid. So claims paid. So marine, marine claims paid. Abracadabra and Ngapi marine. Claim paid. The 2964. 2964. 2964. And I have a fire. The 2160. 2160. Those are the claims that were paid in those two departments like that. After anything, I'm going to get a course of claim. Anything, I'm going to come look at these claims, ladies and gentlemen, when they come, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there will be some expenses attributable to them. At the end of the day, you can see like now your expenses relating to the claims. Kutakuwa kuenda kotini. Kutakuwa kuenda wapi. So expenses related to claims, ladies and gentlemen, for marine, I can see it is 380. These are very specific expense, 384. So Expenses relating to claims, to claims. So claim expenses, claim expenses. So claim expenses, ladies and gentlemen, I can see for marine it's 384. There is nothing there for fire. There is nothing there for fire. Tafta tena kitungine a claim, abracadabra. Tafta kitungine a claim. Yes, kuna claims outstanding brought forward. Yes, kuna claims outstanding brought forward. Are you able to see them? Are you able to see? Yes. You can see claims outstanding at the beginning. Claims outstanding at the beginning. So claims outstanding at the beginning. Claims outstanding at the beginning. Claims outstanding at the beginning. How much are we looking at here now? How much are we looking at here now? Claims outstanding at the beginning. Claims outstanding at the beginning. Marine Ningapi Woye. Marine Ningapi. Marine Ningapi. Marine. Claims outstanding at the beginning, beginning of the year. The one given in the TB. The one given in the TB. I'm being told it's 960. How about claims for fire? Claims for fire 648. Claims outstanding at the beginning of the year. We always do what here, somebody. We always deduct them. You cram right now. You're cramming. Some of these things are better off crammed. Claims outstanding at the beginning, you subtract them because you know they are here. You must have paid them here. And then we have claims outstanding at the end. Claims outstanding, outstanding at the end. Of course, if you would want in this case to scare the examiner, 
if you want to scare the examiner, the examiner is like, ah, I know. You simply tell him claims in T method, isn't it? Try to use jargons. Try to, but you don't have that time really. You don't have that time. So claims outstanding at the end, basically these will be under what? Under what? Under the notes. Under the notes. Is there anybody who is able to see these claims that were outstanding? Yes, note number six. Claims intimated and outstanding. Were 900 and 576 for marine and fire. So 900 and 576. So we have 900. We have 900 here. And the five what here, somebody? 576. 900 and 576. 900 and five what here? 76 like that. And ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Please come and give me the net claims. Give me the net claims. Remember here at the end, you are accruing, yeah? you're adding, right? So please add here very fast, very fast. Tell me something nice and then we should be able to talk. Tell me something nice and then we should be able to talk. So somebody tells me this is 3288, 3288. And then uh, we have the second one, which is 2088 like that. The second one is 2088. And remember that these figures are our B figures. They're our B figures. We say that there are four things that you must always remember under the revenue account. We have the premiums. We have the claims. Number two, we have a commission. Number three, I mean, commission, commission. And then number four, lastly, specific expenses. We are almost there. We have already done the premium. We have done the claims. Now, in this case, you would want to look at this special account called commission, 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 commission. So mention there. So now part C of this, we are going to commissions now. We are going to commissions. 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 So go to commissions here. We know that we have got two types of commissions is very free. These are free marks. We have got two types of commissions really. Which commission should we always start with? Which commission should we always start with? Which commission should we always, we have two accepted, seeded. No accepted, accepted is the one we start with. So we have here commission, accepted the expense. You start with the expense. Commission accepted, commission accepted. And then we have commission seeded, commission seeded, commission seeded, commission seeded. So do we have commission accepted? Do we have commission? <laughs> do we have commission accepted? What have they told us about commission? They have given us, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, they have given us a, a language here for commission, commission, not number two. Commission on both insurance seeded and reinsurance accepted is at the rate of what year five percent of the premiums, of the premiums. So I would want somebody in this case here to give me the commission that was uh, accepted. Commission accepted. I should take five percent of what somebody is following now. I should take five percent of which reinsurance? Is it reinsurance paid or reinsurance received? Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. So I should take 5% of, uh, of which for the one that was accepted, for the one that was accepted, I should take 5% of what? Abracadabra, abracadabra. For the expense, for the expense, I should take 5% of what? They are not talking to me tonight. I don't know why they're not talking to me tonight. I don't know why they're not talking to me tonight. I don't know why they're not talking to me tonight. Of which premium? I, I want to calculate, I want to calculate, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to calculate the commission that was uh, accept, commission accepted, the one in this case here for business that we got. The one for business that we got. Which reinsurance should we use? It is for reinsurance that you received. You got business, reinsurance business, and now you need to pay a commission to third parties, to third parties. So we are writing there that eh, commission accepted is a percentage of what? Reinsurance received. For reinsurance received. For reinsurance received. So then for marine, for marine, I'll come and talk of marine, marine, I'll come and talk of 5% of what? Marine, I'll talk 5% of reinsurance, 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 
uh, reinsurance premium received, I can see it's 1440, right? So I'll take 5% of 1440. So 5% of 1440, is there someone who is able to give us this figure for commission accepted, commission accepted? What figure do we have there? Somebody commission accepted. It's an expenditure, 72, right? 72. So that is marine. How about fire? Fire, I will look at for the reinsurance that I got. How much reinsurance was, uh, in this case, here received? I pay a commission out of that. The commission that I pay out of that is commission for business accepted. So it'll be 5% of 5% uh, of uh, this reinsurance premium received your fire. I'm born 960, I'm an 5% of 960, right? 5% of 960, 5% of 960, of which I'm being told it's 48. And then now from there, you'll come and talk of commission now, commission seeded. Commission seeded, commission seeded, commission seeded for reinsurance that we gave out. So for reinsurance that we are paying, commissions, if I were you, I would have written there that commission seeded is for reinsurance paid. It's for reinsurance paid. The commissions are normally for reinsurance. Commissions are normally for reinsurance. So we have marine, we have marine, and then we have fire. Marine and fire. So in this case here, for the reinsurance paid, it will be 5%, 5%, 5% of the reinsurance, of the reinsurance, of the reinsurance that was paid. So 5% of 960 is how much? 5% of this, the reinsurance we paid, and the other one is 600. So 5% of 960, so these are able to give me answers very fast here. Uh, they're telling me to write, they're telling me to write 48 and what year, 30, yeah? 48 and 30, 48 and 30. 48 and 30, 48 and 30, like that. 48 and 30, 48 and 30. Now remember, ladies and gentlemen, commission seeded for the reinsurance that you are paying, you are getting this money, it's an income. And the sales, this commissions is an expense account. It's an expense account. Whenever you, are, you have an income within expenses, whenever you have an income within expenses, the income must always be in brackets. Whenever you have an income within expenses to show opposite direction, the income must always be captured in form of brackets like that. So then could you kindly give me the net commission now here? Please give me the net commission here. Please give me the net commission. Give me the net commission. Give me the net commission kindly. Give me the net commission kindly. Give me the net commission kindly. So what do we have here for Marine? I'm being given what figure here for Marine? I'm being given 24. 24. And then here, I'm being given what somebody here? 18. Yes. So this is our letter C. This is our letter C. Now from there, we go to the last section. The last section is which section? 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 The last section, ladies and gentlemen, is a section of what here is a section of specific expenses or direct expenses. Thank you very much. Specific or direct expenses. Thank you very much. So mention their specific or direct expenses. Now that is D, the last one. And then we go to sleep. The last one. And then we go to sleep. After this, no more talking, no more writing. We are going to sleep, all of us. So now we are here for the direct what year expenses, direct expenses or specific expenses. So we have here specific expenses, specific expenses, specific expenses. So are you able to see any specific expenses really? Remember the general ones, we took them to the income statement. How about these specific expenses? How about these specific expenses? Yes, someone tells me legal cost. Legal cost, so come there, mention legal cost. Legal cost. Legal cost. So legal cost, what do we have here for legal cost? Marine is 216. Marine is 216. And then fire, fire is 156. This is a specific expense. Why are we calling them specific? It's because they are attributable to the business segments that are attributable to marine, attributable to fire. It's a specific expense. And then Sharon is giving me bad debts. Sharon is giving me bad debts. Let's see whether they are really specific. 
to each of these business lines, insurance lines. So bad debt, somebody's mentioning bad debts. Yes, 204 and 144. So in this case here, we have bad debts. Bad debts, bad debts, we have 204, 204, 204, 204, versus what here, somebody 204 versus 144. Those are bad debts. Do we have any other specific expenditure, specific expense? Do we have any other specific expense? Do we have any other specific expense? Yes, you can see they are here. Management expenses, quite specific to the various products that we have. Management expenses. So management expenses, we have marine and fire, right? Management expenses, we have marine and fire. So we have management expenses. Is there somebody who can give me these figures very fast? I write them here. Management expenses, management expenses, management expenses for marine. Or do you want me to open up the question? Management expenses, we have 780. 780, right? 780, right? Right? 780, right? 780, right? And then we have uh, 6, 696, right? 696, right? 696, right? 690. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, so please come and add everything there. Add everything there. Add everything there to give me the total specific expenses. Please give me the total specific expenses. Total specific expenses from uh, Frida Kendi. Frida Kendi, bad debts 204. I thought we have it. Bad debts 204. Or is there a 204 that I've missed out? Is there a 204 that I've missed out? Is there a 204 that I've missed out? I don't see it here. Bad debt 204. Is there a 204 I've missed out? I don't know. A 204 that I've missed out. Is it there really? I doubt. I doubt. Great. So, ladies and gentlemen, come and give me the total here. It's 1,200, 1,200. And then fire is what here? Fire is 996. Fire is 996 like that. Fire is 996. Let me see whether there is any expense. I think there are questions here. Ah, they are giving me answers. Thank you so much. Now we are through with those four account items. We are through with them. So, come and give me underwritten profits. This is D. D. So come and give me underwritten profits. Underwritten profits. Underwritten profits. Remember, underwritten profits, you take A minus B minus C minus dog. A minus B minus C minus dog. Underwritten profits, we talk of A minus B minus C minus the dog. Expenses relating to claims of 384. Do you remember this expense? This expense, we took it to claims. Because it is a, we, we took that one to claims. It's a very specific expense under claims. It's a very specific expense under claims. Although, of course, for those of you who are in uh, FRS X3, you could, uh, in this case here, you could, uh, you, could, uh, you could, in this case here, forget putting it up, then you bring it here. But you see, we are told that any expenditure that is related to claims, you have to match it up there. You must match it up there. You must match it up there. Go to your claims. You'll be able to see that figure there, ladies and gentlemen. Go to your claims. You'll be able to see that figure there. It's matching, basically. It's matching. So come here. For A, let's get the underwritten profit for, for Marine. For Marine. Let's see for Marine. Is there somebody who is able to see the A figure for Marine? Somebody help me out. Somebody help me out. Somebody help me out here. Yeah. A for Marine, 57.60, yeah? For Marine. How about B for Marine? B for Marine, 16.32. 16.32. B for Marine is 32. Is 32, 88. How about cow? Cow for Marine. We are following those things. Cow for Marine. Cow for Marine, 24. How about a dog for marine? I can see dog for marine here, 1,200. So then what is the underwritten profit for marine? What is the underwritten profit for marine? Let's see the underwritten profit for marine. What do we have here as the underwritten profit for marine? Ingozi tells me 1,248. So the underwritten profit for marine is 1,248. How about the underwritten profit for fire? Underwritten profit for fire. Underwritten profit for fire. Is there somebody who has already done underwritten profit for fire? 
and got 2178. Is there somebody who has done and eaten profit for fire and got 2178? Now we are almost finishing. We are almost finishing 2178 vis a vis 2248. You double on a line, that is the end of our revenue account. So this is our major revenue. This is our major revenue. This is our major revenue. Now, could you kindly do me a favor? Please do me a favor. First of all, double line these figures, and then we go to our statement of comprehensive income. Statement of our comprehensive income. You remember there are figures that we left, ladies and gentlemen, which had not been put in there. There are figures that we left hanging. In our statement of comprehensive income, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, the first thing should be underwritten profit. Underwritten profit. Underwritten profit, ladies and gentlemen, we have two categories. We have the marine. We have the marine, which is what here, somebody, which is 1248. And then we have, uh, in this case here, fire, which is what here, somebody, 2178. And then if you remember, we had uh, investment income. Investment, please go to your comprehensive income. We had already begun doing it. Investment income was coming to how much? Investment income was coming to how much? Is there somebody who can remember the investment income very fast? Anybody who is able to remember the investment income very fast? Anybody who is able to remember the investment income very fast? 336, isn't it? So then could you kindly give me the total here? Just go there and give me the total. The total. You can even call it total revenue. Uh-huh. I cannot convince for marine. I cannot profit for marine. 3762. So this 3762, ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead and subtract now the expenses I had given you. There were three expenses, if you remember. There were three expenses. My own have not seen your question. I haven't gotten your question very well, really. Or is this saying that you can't get these figures? These figures. We, we did one for marine. There is A up there for premium net. The gross, 1998 instead of 2178. Uh, Where did I go wrong? Our scholar sticker is also getting a different figure. Is there somebody who can do that working very nicely and uh, take you on a screenshot and send it on WhatsApp? On WhatsApp, my profits and uh, 1632 and 2148. There must be a problem. There must be a problem. There must be a problem there. There must be a problem there. Students are not getting these figures. Students are not getting. Are these figures correct? Are these figures correct? Uh huh. Maybe they did some additions there. Eh? Then they did some additions and they're supposed to subtract everything minus B, minus C, minus D. Very correct. Okay. Yeah, my own has written there 576. Let, let's see the ones of my own minus 29. Where is my own getting those figures from? Because what I'm seeing there, which is correct, is this 24 and 1200 only. Or oh, the first one is 5760. Look at your second figure, my own is wrong. The second figure is supposed to be 3288, my own. Look at the second figure, my own. The second figure is supposed to be 3288. There must be something that you missed. There must be something that you missed there. How I wish I was a, a classmate of yours. I would have taken, I would have taken a screenshot of that. They must have interchanged. They must have. Once you interchange, I know that commission seeded and the commission accepted. When you interchange, you get yourself into problems. Always start with commission accepted. Commission accepted because this is an expenditure account. This is an expenditure account. So then we have 37, uh, 62 there, ladies and gentlemen. And then come very fast here. Please, from your, from your expenses, we had three of them. Is there somebody who is able to add all of them? Is there somebody who is able to add all of them? The expenses, there were three. There were three. If I remember these expenses, we had auditor's fees, we had director's fees, we had depreciation, three of them. Uh -huh. They're telling me it's 1968. So when you take 1968 out of this, then you should be able to give us profit before tax. Profit before tax. Uh -huh. They're giving me a figure of 1794. This 1794, go ahead and share with the taxman. Don't be so mean. So have they given us a tax rate in this question? Have they given us a tax rate in this question? Have they given us a tax rate in this question? 
30% right. So it's 30%. So 30% of this 1794, which gives me what figure somebody? 30% of this uh, 1794, which gives me what figure? 538.2. 538.2 like that. Please subtract for you to give us a profit after tax. Subtract for you to give us profit after tax. Subtract. So profit after tax, I'm being given a figure of 12, 55.8. 1255.8, 1255.8. So this is your profit for the year. Go ahead and pay dividends out of this. Go ahead and pay dividends. So dividends that were proposed, already we had obtained this figure, if you remember. Already we had obtained this figure, if you remember. Already we had obtained this figure, if you remember. It was 180, you are subtracting there. So could you kindly, ladies and gentlemen, come and give us uh, the profit retained, profit retained for the year. Profit retained for the year. Profit retained for the year. So profit retained for the year. What are you able to get somebody here? 1075.8. 1075.8. 1075 1075.8. Now, after I get profit for the year, remember to add retained earnings brought forward. Retained earnings brought forward. Add retained earnings brought forward. Retained earnings brought forward. When I say money gap is somebody 1615.8. 16, 15.8. Please add there and tell us whether we are able, tell us whether we are able to get the total here. Uh -huh. So in this case here, what are we able to get, ladies and gentlemen, as our retained, retained, they're saying it is a retained, retained profit 540. Where is the 540 now here? Is it tax which is 540? Or brought forward? I'm being told that brought forward is 540. I'm being told that brought forward is 540, really. Brought forward. You see, brought forward is here. Brought forward. Return profit, brought forward is here. Return profit, brought forward is here. Return profit, brought forward is here. Return the profit, brought forward. I hope you guys are able to see the retained profit, which was brought forward. Return the profit, brought forward here. Return the profit, brought forward. It's 540. Return the profit is 540. It's 540. So you add the 540 to this. What are we able to get as our profit current forward? Profit current forward. Profit current forward. I'm being given a figure of 16. 15.8. Eh? 16. 16. 15.8. Is there anything that we may have left out? Is there anything that we may have left out? Please be very keen here. Be very keen there. Please be very keen there. Is there anything we may have left out? Be very keen there. Be very keen there. Be extremely, extremely keen. Be extremely, extremely keen. So this is nothing. So we are okay up to there. So where should we take this 1615.8? This retained earnings carried forward. Retained earnings, where should we take this new bright students? Where should we take this 1615.8? It's an equity element. So go to your equity, go to your equity here. Go to your equity, you have retained earnings. Rub the excess there, rub the excess there, put 16, 15.8 there. Right? Now you have got very many things really here. For example, you have dividends proposed. 180, bring it here. Dividend proposed already, you have it there. For example, we have now the figure of taxation. Taxation is supposed to be how much? Taxation, taxation, ladies and gentlemen, taxation, I can see now the figure for tax there. Tax is supposed to be 538.2. Bring it here. Rub this excess. 538.2. Could we kindly go and look at... Uh, could we kindly go and look at... Kindly, let's go and look at the outstanding claims. The outstanding claims. Outstanding claims. The outstanding claims at the end of the year. Are you able to see the outstanding claims at the end of the year? Is there anybody who is able to see the outstanding claims at the end of the year? Outstanding claims at the end of the year. I would want to fill these things now. Outstanding claims at the end of the year. Yes. Outstanding claims at the end of the year. We already have them. They're here. Outstanding claims at the end of the year. You're supposed to take nine. You're supposed to add now. So take 900 plus five. Please add the two. 900 plus 576, add the two and write them. Add the two and write them for your case here, for your future division. 900 plus that 500 and something. So they're giving me a figure of 1476. So this is 1476. 
1476. And then we have a commission accepted, which is coming as a liability. Commission accepted, which is coming as a liability. My own, just focus here now, focus here, my own. Those things will be surprised. These guys are looking at the key high level marks to give you. Let's focus now, leave alone those things. Trust you me. You can see all the work that you have done here. The marks being given are very few. Don't look for perfection. Don't look for perfection FR. Perfection is for me. My case, it has to balance because I know I've got some scoreboard. If it doesn't balance, it is only say now this Malim does not even know. But for your case, don't even get the total is here. Don't, don't. So is there somebody who is able to see the commissions accepted, which are outstanding at the end of the year? These students are not able to see the commissions accepted. The 72 plus 48 years, 72 plus 48, go to the commissions there, 72 plus 48. How much are we getting here, somebody? How much are we getting here, somebody? 120. Please write here, commissions accepted. Write in full in terms of uh, what you have added for your future revision. 178, we have 78 there. We have done this, 78 plus 48. All right. So is there anything? Yes, we have premium outstanding at the end of the year. Premium outstanding at the end of the year. I can see it here. Premium outstanding. Is there somebody who knows uh, this premium outstanding figures uh, that you should be able to come and add? The premium outstanding figures. Are you able to see them? The premium outstanding figures. The premium outstanding figures. Are you able to see them? The premium outstanding. Are you able to see the premium outstanding? These guys are not seeing this premium, which are outstanding really. The premium outstanding. These guys are not seeing them. 1800 plus what here, somebody? Plus 840, isn't it? 1800 plus 840. I would have even gotten this long time ago. Long time ago. What do we have here, somebody? What do we have here, somebody? 1920? 1920, I'm being given a figure of 1920. Is that okay? Hey, how did you add in Gossi? In Gossi, look at this. We have 1800 plus, we have 1800. But even if you don't get it right, really, to me, I know you have gotten so many marks. 2640, I know you have already gotten so many marks. So in this case here, we have premium outstanding. It's supposed to be 2640. How about commission seeded? outstanding, it's an income that you're expecting to receive. It has to be a current asset. Commission seeded, outstanding. Are you able to see that commission seeded, outstanding? Who is able to see that commission seeded, outstanding? Is there somebody who is able to see the commission that was seeded, which in this case here is outstanding? We should take what plus what somebody, commission seeded. Is there somebody who is able to see the 30 something? 38 plus, 40, 48 plus 30, yeah? 48 plus 30. 48 plus 30, so 48 plus 30, that gives me what here, somebody? That gives me 78, commission seeded. So the only thing that we haven't brought up really here is the reserve, the reserve for an expired premium. The reserve for an, ex that's part of equity. Reserves that you have, those are parts of equity. So come and give us here the reserve, reserve for an expired premium, for an expired premium. Those are equity, their owner's uh, reserves. Owner's reserves. So is there somebody who is able to see that reserve which was carried forward? Are you able to add the two? Tell me what components are you adding for reserve for an expired risk? Are you able to see the balance carried forward of that reserve? Of that reserve as we finish 6,600 plus 2,280. Really? 6,600 plus 2,280. 6,600 plus 2,280. Yes. 6,600 plus 2,280. So 6,600, 6,600 plus 2,280, plus 2,280. So can you kindly add the two? Can you kindly add the two? Give me the total. Can you kindly add the two and then you give me the total? Add the two and then you give me the total. What are we getting somebody here? 88, 80. So this is 88, 80. So could you kindly do me a favor? Is there somebody in this case here who can come here? Is there somebody who can come here? and they give us the total assets first of all. I don't know whether we have left any out, but I'm interested in the total assets. Is there somebody who can give me the total assets? I'm interested in the total assets. Please add them up, total assets, both current and non-current, everything. Claims intimated, claims intimated. Have we left them really? I don't know. Nope, they're here, outstanding. They're here, outstanding. So they're telling me it is 18, 
it is 1800 watt year, 1800 watt year six. And then please using the same stroke of a pen, could you kindly combine the equities and all the liabilities, equities and all the liabilities, what are we able to get down here? Equities and all the liabilities, please combine them. Equity, you take this plus this plus this plus this, plus all those liabilities, all of them, all of them, all of them. Please give us the total equity plus liability. What are we able to get? Equity plus liability, equity plus liability, equity plus liability, it's balancing. It's 1800 what year? 18006. It's 1800 what year? 006, 1806. It's 18006. It is 18.006. In an exam situation, ladies and gentlemen, trust you me. You can see I'm not a bad teacher. I'm quite a fast teacher. With the speed that I'm using, it has taken me how many hours to do the question? Two hours. It has taken me two hours to do the question. So, and as a student, you are required to do this question how many minutes? 40 minutes. So to me, what I would want to leave with you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is have wisdom. Get to know the low hanging fruits. Understand the insurance sector somehow. Get to know that eh, if I get this kind of a question, first of all, I'll go to the income statement. Income statement, am I able to do most of the postings? Balance sheet, am I able to do most of the postings? The same case with the claims here, whatever. Right. So what is claim? Outstanding. So the claim outstanding, of course, will be these guys got accidents. These guys got accidents maybe at the, uh, during the year. By the end of the year, you may not have finished paying them. So the liability will be called claim outstanding. Claim intimated and done what year? Outstanding. It's a liability. It's a liability. Claim, claim. Those guys claim from you. I haven't seen well. So amount of claim outstanding, uh, claim outstanding, claim outstanding. It's given in the question, my own. It's given in the question here. Claims outstanding, they're here. Claims outstanding, 900 plus what here? 576, 900 plus 576. So what I'll do this entire video, I will be able to do what here to post it on YouTube because it's uh, the first question that I'm doing for insurance. So please, I'll say, share with you the link immediately after this. YouTube uploads quite fast. And then, of course, uh, please try to promote your Mwalimu on YouTube. Always share whatever you get there. Try to get even your friend. If it's on YouTube, it's a free thing. Get a friend of yours. Send this thing to a friend of yours. Help your friends, right? Love those things. And ensure that you are doing whatever you are. Subscribing. Subscribe. And if possible, there is a bell that you need to ring the bell so that when I get uh, anything, when I push it there, you don't have to be reminded by anybody that you know what, there is a new video. You should be able to get the new video. Like you must promote Mwalimo. You must promote Mwalimo. I mean, how many Mwalimos can do this thing in two hours and then you at least, you may know, not have understood everything, but at least you have understood somehow. At least you have got some general picture, isn't it? At least you have got some general picture. At least you've got some general picture. So then you need to do what here yeah, to appreciate your Mwalimo by making sure that his YouTube account grows and becomes international. Great. Otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure.